This is Katrin with Disability Rights New York. Welcome to our podcast, Empire State of Rights Closed Captioned. We are here to bring you information on the most relevant topics regarding disability rights and advocacy. As New York State continues to address the coronavirus pandemic, Disability Rights New York will be recording podcasts specifically targeted at bringing you up-to-date information and resources, and we will do our best to get you information as it changes. If there is a topic you would like us to address, please comment below or email us at podcast at drny.org. Today, we welcome Michelle Walton, DRNY PAD Fellow, and today we'll be talking about early intervention services during the COVID-19 shutdown. Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, Catherine. Glad to be here. So many things are on pause right now in New York State and really around the country and still in some parts of the world. And there are a lot of questions out there, and we're going to talk about early intervention today. And for our audience members who don't actually know what that is, can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Early Intervention is a free program that provides evaluations and services for infants and toddlers with disabilities and developmental delays. The purpose of EI is to help children who are having trouble reaching developmental milestones. Your child qualifies for service if they're under three years old, so ages zero to two, and your child must have a developmental disability or delay. And so as we said, many services are on hold. If someone is looking for early intervention for their child, how would they go about getting that now? If your child was getting early intervention services before COVID-19, you may be able to get your child's services with telehealth. You should contact your county's health department or your individualized family service plan coordinator to find out more about how EI is being delivered in your county. In New York State, it's really a county-by-county program I mean, it's all under the umbrella of the Department of Health, but each health department has its own management of services. And Michelle, when should someone contact EI for services? So sometimes your child's doctor or daycare provider shares concerns with you about your child's development and recommends further evaluation, say if they're not learning how to speak within the requisite, you know, recommended timeframes, trouble learning or interacting with their environment trouble communicating and understanding languages, physical delays in crawling, walking, and hand-eye coordination. And so right now, Michelle, the normal way that you might contact a provider is not necessarily available, and a lot of appointments are happening via telehealth. Talk to us about that and how does that work? So telehealth is a way for you and your child's provider to interact via audio and video when you can't meet face-to-face right now, it's private and secure. So your child's health information won't be compromised. Telehealth can't be provided through telephone or text message. It must contain both audio and video components. You have to give consent before telehealth services can begin. And you must provide consent to each one of your child's service providers. According to DOH guidance, telehealth services are the same as per your child's service plan. All EI services can be provided through telehealth according to the Department of Health, including physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, parent training, and consultant services. Evaluations may also be provided with telehealth now, but before your child receives telehealth services, You have to sign and send back a consent for the use of telehealth form to your child service provider. This consent form is on DOH's website and also on our early intervention fact sheet. And so if someone is looking to utilize telehealth and they don't have internet access at home, what can they do? I did some digging and not all telehealth services need internet access. There are resources out there for families who are having difficulty getting free Wi-Fi or internet access during this time. Department of Health has a list of different providers that are providing free Wi-Fi and internet access to families who qualify. And also there are some telehealth platforms that don't require internet access. So I would speak with your child's coordinator and or your county health department for questions regarding technology access. 
That's a lot of good information. And we'll be listing the resources below for any of the forms that you're looking for that Michelle's just talked about. Now, Michelle, a lot of our audience members will want to know about the transition from early intervention to preschool education. What does that look like and what should parents expect? So normally your child's team decides if your child will get preschool services, so preschool, special education, PSE services before your child turns three. As a parent, you are an equal part of this team. But during this COVID-19 shutdown, it may be hard to get the information and evaluations that the team needs in order to make an informed decision about your child's eligibility for preschool special education services. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of guidance surrounding transition services right now, but we are working to keep abreast and updated of new guidance that's coming out from New York State Department of Health and the United States Department of Education. And so this shutdown took place very quickly, and many parents had no way of planning or anticipating what has happened or what was going to happen. Talk a little bit about what happened if the parents had requested this before the shutdown, but they didn't have a meeting to develop a plan. What should these parents be doing now? So normally your child's first individual family service plan meeting would happen within 45 days from the request of services. So from the date that you contact your local EI department to request services for your child. But because of the shutdown, the 45-day deadline has been extended if you can't attend a meeting within 45 days because of COVID-19. So you can have your first meeting through telehealth now but you have to make sure that you provide consent first and is the key for your child to get services remotely. It is important that you tell your individual family service plan coordinator that you can't attend a meeting and why, just because they document all this information. So if you don't tell your coordinator that you can't attend a meeting, especially the first one, you may have to restart the process all over again. So it's important to keep communication lines open between you and your child's service provider to ensure that they get services within a timely manner. Michelle, this is such a big topic and we've only talked about a little bit of it here today. Is there anything else that you want to let our audience know about before we sign off? Just keep talking to your child service providers if you have any questions about how telehealth is delivered. If you're having trouble accessing telehealth, you know, make sure that you're in contact with your county health department because they're the entity that administers the program. Thank you so much, Michelle, for your time today. We really appreciate it and look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Katrin. Empire State of Rights closed captioned has been brought to you by Disability Rights New York, your source for disability rights and advocacy. If you enjoyed our program, make sure to subscribe, like, and share this post. If there is a subject you would like us to discuss, please email podcast at drny.org or comment below. Tune in next Wednesday, where we'll bring you more information on disability rights in the state of New York. The closed captioned version of this podcast is available on our YouTube channel. To listen to more Empire State of Rights closed captioned, follow us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify.